Canada is going down. Let's talk about it. All right, so Canada's going down and it's going down in Canada. This is crazy. I can't believe that they saw what's happening around the world and they're like, okay, we're gonna do this here. Let's, let's get these people fired up here because they know there's a lot of similarities between the Canadians and the Europeans and Dutch farmers. All right, so we saw these massive trucker protests in Canada last winter, huge shut down Toronto, shut down the capital. They were, they were sweating, all right? They were sweating about Canada, no doubt about it, or sweating about the truckers in Canada, no doubts, all right? But it's almost like, are they trying to get something going again with this? Because this is, this is just so extreme that they're gonna have the same reaction that they had in uh, the Netherlands. And this decision by their prime minister Trudeau, this will lead to people starving to death. So we're gonna implement an agenda that starves people, but we're also gonna promote these very sick and twisted ideas. So the New York Times, okay, the New York Times is publishing that the time for cannibalism could be now. Cannibalism, yes, you heard me. This is in the New York Times. I will put up their tweet. They are talking about how, hey, it could be the time for cannibalism. It's, it's so glorified, it's so sexy in the media. You know, all these books and movies glorify it. It's great. This is dystopian. They know what's coming next. All right. And there's also being ideas pushed, you know, the grasshoppers is is eating grasshoppers better than eating beef? You know, is that better? Uh, it's insane. They know what they're doing. They are trying to get rid of farming. So we saw how in the Netherlands that Dutch farmers were told that they would have to reduce their livestock numbers by 30%. 30%. Imagine having to get rid of 30% of something you own that's very valuable to you. 30% of your bank account, 30% of your house, you need to get rid of it. And this same agenda has been pushed in Canada as well. Uh, Canada is pushing for farmers to have 30% less fertilizer use by 2030. 30%. That's that's seven and a half years away, 30% less. So as the population is growing, as there's a strain on the food supply and the supply chain and the economy and people are being squeezed out from inflation, we are having a 30% reduction of fertilizer. This is going to cause massive disruptions for the food supply. So essentially Canada is going to produce 30% less food. And these ideas always say like, oh, we will replace it. We will just use manure as fertilizer, okay? I'm for organic, I'm for local, I'm for farmer's markets, I'm for all that stuff. I used to do all that stuff, okay? I'm for that. But at the same time, you can't just force people to reduce this by 30%. But at the same time, where is the cow manure going to come from? All right, so we wanna go organic and use cow manure. And I grew all organic, right? I'm not against organic, I love organic. I try to buy organic, I love it. I'm not against it, but I'm also pragmatic. Where does this manure come from? A lot of it comes from giant feedlots of cows eating corn. So if we drastically reduce the amount of crops being grown by 30% with reduced fertilizer by 30%, then what are we going to feed all the animals that we need to use their manure? You know what I'm saying? Like there's gonna be less feed for the cows, so there's gonna be less manure to put on the crops, all right? This is how it works. This is how the world works. We are stuck in a bind right now and we can't just force it Overnight, this is radical, 30% in seven and a half years. 
reduction of fertilizer. I don't know what they're supposed to do. And this comes as fertilizer prices are already skyrocketing and farmers are already reducing their amount of fertilizer because of sanctions and this whole deal with Russia. And this is gonna cause massive profit loss for farmers. Less food produced is less food sold on the same amount of land, okay? So this is, they did the numbers approximately on a thousand acres of crop, farmers would lose $29,000 to $31,000 every single year, right? So imagine somebody just comes and takes $30,000 away from you every year. You wanna try to keep going up, moving up, keep your business growing. And instead, you're gonna be net negative $30,000. That does not sound nice. And you might think a thousand acres is a lot. A thousand acres really is not much. They're really not making much money off it at the end of the day. They're, make, they're making a very modest income on only a thousand acres. And somebody comes and takes 31,000, potentially a giant percentage of that, 50%, 40%, 30% of what you make, that's gonna be devastating. Not to mention on top of taxes and everything else. So this is, this is a shutdown, all right? This is the shutdown of our farmers, of our farm industry. And this is coming to America too, don't worry. This is part of the net zero 2050 agenda, right? So Canada has decided to be net zero carbon neutral, whatever it's called, by 2050. And this sounds like a good thing, but when you think of the real implications of it, like farmers losing $30,000 on their crop, $40,000 Canadian, that's devastating. People are gonna get out the business, they're gonna go do something else, okay? They're not gonna be a part of this. And Biden has signed an executive order for the US to be net zero by 2050 as well. So we are on path for the same agenda. So look out for these same exact policies and reductions to hit our American farmers soon as well. This article was saying that expect Canada to import more food to feed its population. Well, where are these imports coming from? India has literally banned wheat exports from their country because they're experiencing such a shortage. Okay, we all know what's happening with these sanctions and with the war, with all the wheat tied up and the support. We know all that, all right? And this is, and then Canada saying, we are going to import even more food. Where is this food going to come from? Somebody has to grow it. Canada is a huge agricultural producer. They have very rich and abundant farmland and resources and water. They are a huge producer of agricultural products for the world. The world depends on Canada. The world depends on America. And if we implement these massive 30% reductions, then the world's gonna starve. That's what's gonna happen. So just imagine a 30% food reduction that could potentially kill 30% of people. I'm sure we can make up some waste, but still 15, 20% of people in Canada are at risk. So if you live in Canada, let me know. What are you doing? Are you homesteading or gardening? You need to now. All right, we're in now, it's still summer. You still have a couple more months up there in Canada. I'm sure in most places to at least grow something. And you can grow cold hardy stuff into the winter too, like kale and broccoli and get your carrots going before you even get to winter and you can just leave them in the ground. You, you can just put a little high tunnel on them. You can just leave your carrots in the ground for a good majority of winter and just harvest them once they're already grown. So look into these things, especially if you're in Canada, it's, it's gonna get bad. The food shortages are gonna get terrible. And our economies are so intertwined, the United States and Canada, it's gonna affect us too. It's gonna put a strain on us too. We're gonna have to import more food into Canada. And if these policies come here, good luck Canada. Where, how are we gonna import or export food to you? So if you like these kind of videos, go watch my video earlier today crazy stuff's happening in Cuba, crazy. 
all right it's insane you need to hear about it go check out that video i'll leave a link down below in the comments to that video and if you like this kind of stuff this prepper news this home study news this food news all that good gravy please hit that thumbs up for me and the comments and the sub and the bell if you really liked it hit that bell too and i'm super blessed to have you guys watching thank you so much you have a big blessed beautiful day thank you